Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Achilles. In Greek mythology, Achilles was a Greek hero of the Trojan War in the central character and greatest warrior of Homer's Iliad. His mother was the immortal nymph Thetis, and his father, the mortal Peleus, was the king of the Myrmidons. Achilles's most notable feat during the Trojan War was the slaying of the Trojan hero Hector outside the gates of Troy. Although the death of Achilles is not presented in the Iliad, other sources concur that he was killed near the end of the Trojan War by Paris, who shot him in the heel with an arrow. Later legends state that Achilles was invulnerable in all of his body except for his heel. Alluding to these legends, the term, Achilles heel, has come to mean a point of weakness especially in someone or something with an otherwise strong constitution. Etymology Linear B tablets attest to the personal name Achilles in the forms of Kiryu and Akiriwi, the latter being the dative of the former. The name grew more popular, even becoming common soon after the 7th century BC and was also turned into the female form chi iota lambda lambda epsilon iota alpha, attested in Attica in the 4th century BC and in the form Aquilia. On a stele in Halicarnassus is the name of a female gladiator fighting an Amazon. Achilles' name can be analyzed as a combination of distress, pain, sorrow, grief and people, soldiers, nation, resulting in a protoform Achilaos. He who has the people distressed or, he whose people have distress. The grief or distress of the people is a theme raised numerous times in the Iliad. Achilles' role as the hero of grief or distress forms an ironic juxtaposition with the conventional view of him as the hero of. Furthermore, Laos has been construed by Gregory Negi, following Leonard Palmer, to mean, a corps of soldiers, a muster. With this derivation, the name obtains a double meaning in the poem. When the hero is functioning rightly, his men bring distress to the enemy, but when wrongly, his men get the grief of war. The poem is in part about the misdirection of anger on the part of leadership. Another etymology relates the name to a Proto-Indo-European compound HECPDS, sharp foot, which first gave an Illyrian Akpedios, evolving through time into Akdios and then Akidios. The shift from DD to Al is then ascribed to the passing of the name into Greek via a pre-Greek source. The first root part HEC, sharp, Pointed also gave Greek kappa eta, kappa mu eta and chi epsilon sigma, whereas chi omicron sigma stems from the root heg. To be upset, afraid. The whole expression would be comparable to the Latin acupedius, swift of foot. Compare also the Latin word family of assis, sharp edge a point, battle line. Battle, engagement, ACUS, needle, pin, bodkin, and ACUO, to make pointed, sharpen, wet. To exercise, to arouse. Some topical epitheta of Achilles in the Iliad point to this swift footedness, namely pi omicron delta alpha rho kappa eta sigma delta omicron sigma chi iota lambda lambda epsilon sigma, or even more frequently. Pi Omicron Delta Alpha Sigma Kappa Sigma Chi Iota Lambda Lambda Epsilon Upsilon Sigma. Some researchers deem the name a loan word, possibly from the pre-Greek language. Achilles's descent from the Nereid Thetis and a similarity of his name with those of river deities such as Acheron and Achelous have led to speculations about him being an old water divinity. Robert S. P. Beeks has suggested a pre-Greek origin of the name, based among other things on the coexistence of lambda lambda and lambda in epic language which may account for a palatalized phoneme polite year in the original language. Birth and Early Years 
Achilles was the son of the Nereid Thetis and of Peleus, the king of the Myrmidons. Zeus and Poseidon had been rivals for the hand of Thetis until Prometheus, the forethinker, warned Zeus of a prophecy that Thetis would bear a son greater than his father. For this reason, the two gods withdrew their pursuit, and had her wed Peleus. There is a tale which offers an alternative version of these events, in the Argonautica Zeus's sister and wife Hera alludes to the ties chased resistance to the advances of Zeus, pointing out that Thetis was so loyal to Hera's marriage bond that she coolly rejected the father of gods, Thetis. Although a daughter of the sea god Nereus, was also brought up by Hera, further explaining her resistance to the advances of Zeus. Zeus was furious, and decreed that she would never marry an immortal. According to the Achaeid, written by Statius in the 1st century AD, and to non-surviving previous sources, when Achilles was born Thetis tried to make him immortal, by dipping him in the river Styx. However, he was left vulnerable at the part of the body by which he held him, his left heel. It is not clear if this version of events was known earlier. In another version of this story, Thetis anointed the boy in Ambrosia and put him on top of a fire to burn away the mortal parts of his body. She was interrupted by Peleus and abandoned both father and son in a rage. However, none of the sources before Statius makes any reference to this general invulnerability. To the contrary, in the Iliad Homer mentions Achilles being wounded, in Book 21, the Paraeonian hero Astropius, son of Pelagon, challenged Achilles by the river Scamander. He cast two spears at once. One grazed Achilles's elbow, drawing a spurt of blood. Also, in the fragmentary poems of the epic cycle in which we can find description of the Hero's death, there is no trace of any reference to his general invulnerability or his famous weakness. At the heel, in the later vase paintings presenting Achilles' death, the arrow hit his body. Peleus entrusted Achilles to Chiron the center, on Mount Pelion, to be reared. Thetis foretold that her son's fate was either to gain glory and die young, or to live a long but uneventful life in obscurity. Achilles chose the former, and decided to take part in the Trojan War. According to Homer, Achilles grew up in Thea together with his companion Patroclus, hidden on Scyrus. Some post-Homeric sources claim that in order to keep Achilles safe from the war, Thetis hid the young man at the court of Lycomedes, king of Scyrus. There, Achilles is disguised as a girl and lives among Lycomedes' daughters, perhaps under the name Pyrrha, with Lycomedes' daughter Diidomia, whom in the account of Statius he rapes. Achilles their father's a son, Neoptolemus. According to this story, Odysseus learns from the prophet cultures that the Achaeans would be unable to capture Troy without Achilles' aid. Odysseus goes to Scyrus in the guise of a peddler selling women's clothes and jewelry, and places a shield and spear among his goods. When Achilles instantly takes up the spear, Odysseus sees through his disguise and convinces him to join the Greek campaign. In another version of the story, Odysseus arranges for a trumpet alarm to be sounded while he was with Lycomedes' women. While the women flee in panic, Achilles prepares to defend the court, thus giving his identity away. Achilles in the Trojan War According to the Iliad, Achilles arrived at Troy with fifty ships, each carrying fifty Myrmidons. He appointed five leaders, Menestheus, Eudorus, Pisander, Phoenix and Alcimedon. Telephus When the Greeks left for the Trojan War, they accidentally stopped in Mysia, ruled by King Telephus, 
In the resulting battle, Achilles gave Telephus a wound that would not heal. Telephus consulted an oracle, who stated that, he that wounded shall heal. Guided by the oracle, he arrived at Argos, where Achilles healed him in order that he might become their guide for the voyage to Troy. According to other reports in Euripides Lost play about Telephus, he went to Olis pretending to be a beggar and asked Achilles to heal his wound. Achilles refused, claiming to have no medical knowledge. Alternatively, Telephus held Orestes for ransom, the ransom being Achilles' aid in healing the wound. Odysseus reasoned that the spear had inflicted the wound, therefore, the spear must be able to heal it. Pieces of the spear were scraped off onto the wound and Telephus was healed. Troilus According to the Cypria, when the Achaeans desired to return home, they were restrained by Achilles, who afterwards attacked the cattle of Aeneas, sacked neighboring cities, and killed Tenes, a son of Apollo, as well as Priam's son Troilus in the sanctuary of Apollo Thymbraos. However, the romance between Troilus and Chryseis described in Geoffrey Chaucer's Troilus and Chrysaed, and in William Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida is a medieval invention. In Des Phrygius's account of the destruction of Troy, the Latin summary through which the story of Achilles was transmitted to medieval Europe, as well as in older accounts, Troilus was a young Trojan prince, the youngest of King Priam's and Hecuba's five legitimate sons. Despite his youth, he was one of the main Trojan war leaders, a horse fighter or chariot fighter, according to Homer. Prophecies linked Troilus's fate to that of Troy and so he was ambushed in an attempt to capture him. Yet Achilles, struck by the beauty of both Troilus and his sister Polyxena, and overcome with lust, directed his sexual attentions on the youth who, refusing to yield, instead found himself decapitated upon an altar on Philos of Apollo Thymbraios. Later versions of the story suggested Troilus was accidentally killed by Achilles in an overardent lover's embrace. In this version of the myth, Achilles's death therefore came in retribution for this sacrilege. Ancient writers treated Troilus as the epitome of a dead child mourned by his parents. Had Troilus lived to adulthood, the first Vatican mythographer claimed Troy would have been invincible. Achilles in the Iliad Homer's Iliad is the most famous narrative of Achilles' deeds in the Trojan War. Achilles' wrath is the central theme of the poem. The first two lines of the Iliad read, the Homeric epic only covers a few weeks of the decade-long war, and does not narrate Achilles' death. It begins with Achilles' withdrawal from battle after being dishonored by Agamemnon, the commander of the Achaean forces. Agamemnon has taken a woman named Chryseis as his slave. Her father Chryses, a priest of Apollo, begs Agamemnon to return her to him. Agamemnon refuses, and Apollo sends a plague amongst the Greeks. The prophet Calchas correctly determines the source of the troubles but will not speak unless Achilles vows to protect him. Achilles does so, and Calchas declares that Chryseis must be returned to her father. Agamemnon consents, but then commands that Achilles' battle prize Briseis, the daughter of Briseis, be brought to him. To replace Chryseis, angry at the dishonor of having his plunder and glory taken away, with the urging of his mother Thetis, Achilles refuses to fight or lead his troops alongside the other Greek forces. At the same time, burning with rage over Agamemnon's theft, Achilles prays to Thetis to convince Zeus to help the Trojans gain ground in the war, so that he may regain his honor. As the battle turns against the Greeks, thanks to the influence of Zeus, Nestor declares that the Trojans are winning, because Agamemnon has angered Achilles. 
and urges the king to appease the warrior. Agamemnon agrees and sends Odysseus and two other chieftains, Ajax and Phoenix, to Achilles with the offer of the return of Briseis and other gifts. Achilles rejects all Agamemnon offers him and simply urges the Greeks to sail home as he was planning to do. The Trojans, led by Hector, subsequently push the Greek army back toward the beaches and assault the Greek ships. With the Greek forces on the verge of absolute destruction, Patroclus leads the Myrmidons into battle, wearing Achilles' armor, though Achilles remains at his camp. Patroclus succeeds in pushing the Trojans back from the beaches, but is killed by Hector before he can lead a proper assault on the city of Troy. After receiving the news of the death of Patroclus from Antilochus, the son of Nestor, Achilles grieves over his beloved companion's death. His mother Thetis comes to comfort the distraught Achilles. She persuades Hephaestus to make new armor for him in place of the armor that Patroclus had been wearing, which was taken by Hector. The new armor includes the shield of Achilles, described in great detail in the poem. Enraged over the death of Patroclus, Achilles ends his refusal to fight and takes the field, killing many men in his rage, but always seeking out Hector. Achilles even engages in battle, with the river god Scamander, who has become angry that Achilles is choking his waters with all the men he has killed. The god tries to drown Achilles, but is stopped by Hera and Hephaestus. Zeus himself takes note of Achilles's rage and sends the gods to restrain him so that he will not go on to sack Troy itself before the time allotted for its destruction, seeming to show that the unhindered rage of Achilles can defy fate itself. Finally, Achilles finds his prey. Achilles chases Hector around the wall of Troy three times before Athena, in the form of Hector's favorite and dearest brother, Deiphobus, persuades Hector to stop running and fight Achilles face to face. After Hector realizes the trick, he knows the battle is inevitable. Wanting to go down fighting, he charges at Achilles with his only weapon, his sword, but misses. Accepting his fate, Hector begs Achilles not to spare his life, but to treat his body with respect after killing him. Achilles tells Hector it is hopeless to expect that of him, declaring that, my rage, my fury would drive me now to hack your flesh away and eat you raw such agonies you have caused me. Achilles then kills Hector and drags his corpse by its heels behind his chariot. After having a dream where Patroclus begs Achilles to hold his funeral, Achilles hosts a series of funeral games in his honor. With the assistance of the god Hermes, Hector's father, Priam, goes to Achilles' tent to plead with Achilles for the return of Hector's body so that he can be buried. Achilles relents and promises a truce for the duration of the funeral. The poem ends with a description of Hector's funeral, with the doom of Troy and Achilles himself still to come. Later epic accounts, fighting Penthesilea and Memnon. The Ethiopus in a work named Post-Homerica, composed by Quintus of Smyrna in the 4th century AD, relate further events from the Trojan War, when Penthesilea, queen of the Amazons and daughter of Ars, arrives in Troy. Priam hopes that she defeat Achilles. After his temporary truce with Priam, Achilles fights and kills the warrior queen, only to grieve over her death later. At first, he was so distracted by her beauty, he did not fight as intensely as usual. Once he realized that his distraction was endangering his life, he refocused and killed her. Following the death of Patroclus, Nestor's son Antilochus becomes Achilles' closest companion. When Memnon, son of the dawn goddess Aeos and king of Ethiopia, slays Antilochus, 
Achilles once more obtains revenge on the battlefield, killing Memnon. Consequently, Aeos will not let the sun rise, until Zeus persuades her. The fight between Achilles and Memnon over Antilochus echoes that of Achilles and a Hector over Patroclus, except that Memnon was also the son of a goddess. Many Homeric scholars argued that episode inspired many details in the Iliad's description of the death of Patroclus and Achilles's reaction to it. The episode then formed the basis of the cyclic epic Ethiopus, which was composed after the Iliad, possibly in the 7th century BC. The Ethiopus is now lost, except for scattered fragments quoted by later authors. Achilles's death The death of Achilles, as predicted by Hector with his dying breath, was brought about by Paris with an arrow. In some versions, the god Apollo guided Paris' arrow. Some retellings also state that Achilles was scaling the gates of Troy and was hit with a poisoned arrow. All of these versions deny Paris any sort of valor, owing to the common conception that Paris was a coward and not the man his brother Hector was. And Achilles remained undefeated on the battlefield. His bones were mingled with those of Patroclus, and funeral games were held. He was represented in the Ethiopes as living after his death in the island of Luki, at the mouth of the river Danube. Another version of Achilles' death is that he fell deeply in love with one of the Trojan princesses, Polyxena. Achilles asks Priam for Polyxena's hand in marriage. Priam is willing, because it would mean the end of the war and an alliance with the world's greatest warrior. But while Priam is overseeing the private marriage of Polyxena and Achilles, Paris, who would have to give up Helen if Achilles married his sister, hides in the bushes and shoots Achilles with a divine arrow, killing him. In the Odyssey, Agamemnon informs Achilles of his pompous burial and the erection of his mound. At the Hellespont while they are receiving the dead suitors in Hades. He claims they built him massive burial mound on the beach of Ilion that could be seen by anyone approaching from the ocean. Achilles was cremated, and his ashes buried in the same urn as those of Patroclus. Paris was later killed by Philoctetes using the enormous bow of Heracles. In Book 11 of Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus sails to the underworld and converses with the shades. One of these is Achilles, who when greeted as blessed in life, blessed in death, responds that he would rather be a slave to the worst of masters than be king of all the dead. But Achilles then asks Odysseus of his son's exploits in the Trojan War and when Odysseus tells of Neoptolemus' heroic actions, Achilles is filled with satisfaction. This leaves the reader with an ambiguous understanding of how Achilles felt about their heroic life. According to some accounts, he had married Madea in life, so that after both their deaths they were united in the Elysian fields of Hades as here he promised. Thetis in Apollonius's Argonautica Achilles and Patroclus the exact nature of Achilles's relationship with Patroclus has been a subject of dispute in both the classical period and modern times. In the Iliad, it appears to be the model of a deep and loyal friendship. Homer does not suggest that Achilles and his close friend Patroclus were lovers, despite there being no direct evidence in the text of the Iliad that Achilles and Patroclus were lovers. This theory was expressed by some later authors, commentators, from classical antiquity to the present have often interpreted the relationship through the lens of their own cultures. In 5th century BC Athens, the intense bond was often viewed in light of the Greek custom of Paedorosea. In Plato's Symposium, the participants in a dialogue about love assumed that Achilles and Patroclus were a couple. Phaedrus argues that Achilles was the younger, 
and more beautiful one, so he was the beloved and Patroclus was the lover. But ancient Greek had no words to distinguish heterosexual and homosexual. And it was assumed that a man could both desire handsome young men and have sex with women. The Fate of Achilles' Armor Achilles' armor was the object of a feud between Odysseus and Telamone and Ajax. They competed for it by giving speeches on why they were the bravest after Achilles to their Trojan prisoners, who after considering both men came to a consensus in favor of Odysseus. Furious, Ajax cursed Odysseus, which earned the ire of Athena. Athena temporarily made Ajax so mad with grief and anguish that he began killing sheep, thinking them his comrades. After a while, when Athena lifted his madness and Ajax realized that he had actually been killing sheep, Ajax was left so ashamed that he committed suicide. Odysseus eventually gave the armor to Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles. A relic claimed to be Achilles' as bronze-headed spear was for centuries preserved in the Temple of Athena on the Acropolis of Phasalus, Mysia, a port on the Pamphylian Gulf. The city was visited in 333 BC by Alexander the Great, who envisioned himself as the new Achilles and carried the Iliad with him. But his court biographers do not mention the spear. However, it was shown in the time of Pausanias in the 2nd century AD. Achilles, Ajax and a game of petty. Numerous paintings on pottery have suggested a tale not mentioned in the literary traditions. At some point in the war, Achilles and Ajax were playing a board game. They were absorbed in the game and oblivious to the surrounding battle. The Trojans attacked and reached the heroes, who were saved only by an intervention of Athena. Worship and Heroic Cult The tomb of Achilles, extant throughout antiquity in Trode, was venerated by Thessalians, but also by Persian expeditionary forces, as well as by Alexander the Great and the Roman Emperor Caracalla. Achilles's cult was also to be found at other places, e.g., on the island of Astypalia in the Sparads, in Sparta which had a sanctuary, in Elis, and in Achilles' homeland Thessalian, as well as in the Magna Graecia cities of Tarentum, Locri, and Croton, accounting for an almost pan-Hellenic cult to the hero. The spread and intensity of the Heros veneration among the Greeks that had settled on the northern coast of the Pontus Exinus, today's Black Sea, appears to have been remarkable. An archaic cult is attested for the Milesian colony of Olbia as well as for an island in the middle of the Black Sea, today identified with Snake Island. Early dedicatory inscriptions from the Greek colonies on the Black Sea attest the existence of a heroic cult of Achilles. From the 6th century BC onwards, the cult was still thriving in the 3rd century AD, when dedicatory stele from Olbia refer to an Achilles Pontarches, who was invoked as a protector of the city of Olbia, venerated on par with Olympian gods such as the local Apollo Prostates, Hermes Agoraeus, or Poseidon. Pliny the Elder in his Natural History mentions a port of the Achaean and island of Achilles famous for the tomb of that man, situated somewhat nearby Olbia, and the Nipa Bug estuary, furthermore, at 125 Roman miles from this island. He places a peninsula, which stretches forth in the shape of a sword, obliquely, called Dromos Achilleos and considered the place of the Heros exercise or of games instituted. By him, this last feature of Pliny's account is considered to be the iconic spit, called today Tendra, situated between the mouth of the Dnieper and Karkinic Bay, but which is hardly 125 Roman miles away from the Dnieper Bug estuary, as Pliny states. 
In the following chapter of his book, Pliny refers to the same island as Aquileia, and introduces two further names for it, Lucimacaron. The present-day measures he gives at this point seem to account for an identification of Aquileia and Luce with today's Snake Island. Pliny's contemporary Pomponius Mellard tells that Achilles was buried on an island named Aquileia, situated between the Boris Thines and the Ister, adding to the geographical confusion. Ruins of a square temple, measuring 30 meters to a side, possibly that dedicated to Achilles, were discovered by Captain Critzikli in 1823 on Snake Island. A second exploration in 1840 showed that the construction of a lighthouse had destroyed all traces of this temple. A 5th century BC black glazed Lekathos inscription, found on the island in 1840, reads, Glaucos, son of Poseidon, dedicated me to Achilles, lord of Luci. In another inscription from the 5th or 4th century BC, a statue is dedicated to Achilles, Lord of Luci, by a citizen of Olbia, while in a further dedication. The city of Olbia confirms its continuous maintenance of the island's cult, again suggesting its quality as a place of a supra-regional hero veneration. The heroic cult dedicated to Achilles on Luce seems to go back to an account from the lost epic Ethiopus according to which, after his untimely death, Thetis had snatched her son from the funeral pyre and removed him to a mythical lambda epsilon epsilon caparate a new sigma omicron sigma. Already in the 5th century BC, Pindar had mentioned a cult of Achilles on a bright island of the Black Sea, while in another of his works, Pindar would retell the story of the immortalized Achilles living on a geographically indefinite island of the blessed together with other heroes such as his father Peleus and Cadmus. Well known is the connection of these mythological fortunate isles of the Homeric Elysium, with the stream Oceanus which according to Greek mythology surrounds the inhabited world, which should have accounted for the identification of the northern strands of the Exene with it. Guy Hedrin has found further evidence for this connection of Achilles with the northern margin of the inhabited world in a poem by Alcius, speaking of Achilles lord of Scythia and the opposition of north and south, as evoked by Achilles' fight against the Ethiopian prince Memnon, who in his turn would be removed to his homeland by his mother Aos after his death. The Periplus of the Euxine Sea gives the following details, the Greek geographer Dionysius Periagetes, who lived probably during the 1st century AD, wrote that the island was called Luce, because the wild animals which live there are white. It is said that there, in Luce Island, reside the souls of Achilles and other heroes, and that they wander through the uninhabited valleys of this island. This is how Jove rewarded the men who had distinguished themselves through their virtues, because through virtue they had acquired everlasting honor. Similarly, others relate the island's name to its white cliffs, snakes or birds dwelling there. Pausanias has been told that the island is covered with forests and full of animals, some wild, some tame. In this island there is also Achilles' temple and his statue. Luz had also a reputation as a place of healing. Pausanias reports that the Delphic Pythia sent a lord of Croton to be cured of a chest wound. Ammianus Marcellinus attributes the healing to waters on the island. A number of important commercial port cities of the Greek waters were dedicated to Achilles. Herodotus, Pliny the Elder and Strabo reported on the existence of a town Achalion, built by settlers from Italy in the 6th century BC, close to the Heros presumed burial mound in the Trode. Later attestations point to an Achalion in Messenia and an Achilleos in Laconia. Nicolae Densicianu recognized a connection to Achilles in the names of Aquileia, 
and of the northern arm of the Danube Delta, called Chilia, though his conclusion that Luce had sovereign rights over the Black Sea evokes modern rather than archaic sea law. The kings of Epirus claimed to be descended from Achilles through his son, Neoptolemus. Alexander the Great, son of the Epirot princess Olympias, could therefore also claim this descent, and in many ways strove to be like his great ancestor. He is said to have visited the tomb of Achilles at Achalion while passing Troy. In AD 216 the Roman Emperor Caracalla, while on his way to war against Parthia, emulated Alexander by holding games around Achilles' tomb Ulysses. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.